Hello Epic Fails, Bobby Black is back with another SmackDown review, but first off I'd like to thank my new subscribers, which is Osmankai, BloodyBrad86, and Black Jezzy1991. Jeezy? Black Jeezy? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I'd also like to thank everybody who left comments on my video last week, which would be the Zamario Bia, Osmankai's... It's apparently one of one of his friends' accounts or something like that, so... Uh, Classic1333, Largest85, DW Squirtle, Jericho1123, Howard the Man, Ugly Kanyoke, Andrew070, Go to Study Please, and Glenn Jones 1000 And I'm going to try to remember this, but uh, I'm going to do a quote, or a comment of the week, which this week's will have to be Jericho1123, where he said, he commented last week that I said something about uh, Randy Orton was too famous to be a lumberjack and he said that I should make that a t-shirt. So I didn't write it down quote for word for word, but that's the gist of the comment was that he said that I should make that into a Racing Revolution t-shirt saying that, uh, you know, like, you know, saying that Orton's too famous to be a lumberjack or, you know, even saying like myself is, you know, wear a shirt that says I'm too famous to be a lumberjack or something stupid like that. So, I'd also like to let everybody know about what this little image I'm putting up here is right now, and it is in regards to Hack Week. Duh. What is Hack Week? Hack Week is where every member of the revolution who does videos, Jericho, uh, is going to do their videos via hack. No effort, no ingenuity, no thoughtfulness, just a hack video. No editing, no whatever. So, you know, you never know. Next, you know, next week there's going to be a lot of crazy things happening on, you know, on my channel. So take everything that happens on my channel next week with grain of salt. It's meant to entertain all of you who watch the hacks on YouTube. And well, this guy here. So, um, anyway. So that's about it. Go to WrestlingRevolution.com, the Epic Center for all your wrestling needs. Or It's a great wrestling community of people just trying to make wrestling fun again. And, you know, so it's just it's a place to hang. So, uh, let's jump into SmackDown. Get ready for the SmackDown! This week's SmackDown is in St. Louis, Missouri. We start off with an in-ring promo with Booker T and Mizak Henry. Booker congratulates Mark Henry. Mark Henry gets pissed off because he says that, you know, Booker T says that being a six-time world champion, you know, he knows how hard it is to make it to the top of the mountain and crap like that. And then Mark Henry takes it as, you know, you're saying you're six times better than me or something like that. So, and it was kind of a, a rough segment there where I was like, okay. Booker, uh, Mark Henry says that, uh, the hall, you know, that he's going to induct Booker T in the Hall of Pain, and he's also going to induct Randy Orton in the Hall of Pain, and he's not just going to hurt Randy Orton on Sunday at Hell in a Cell, but he's going to end his career. Yay. Uh, okay, so we go to the first match of the night, which is Mizar Henry versus the Great Khali. I gave this three out of five Black Rangers. Why did I give this 3 out of 5 Black Rangers? I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for that, especially from Zamario, who says that, you know, that Kali is a worthless cunt and should be fired and talentless. And But this match was pretty good for two huge, not very mobile guys. I'm sorry. I mean, it was what it should have been. It was a slugfest. These guys were just barreling into one another. Uh, great Kali put, actually had a great showing here. I mean, he hit Mark Henry with two Kali chops. Uh, to knock him off his feet, and then Mark Henry just was working on Kali's legs, and it, I mean, granted, it wasn't the most entertaining match in the world, but I liked it because these two guys really worked well together, believe it or not. Uh, in the end, of course, Mark Henry hit a World's Strongest Slam on the Great Kali again, and pinned him. So, and eh, 3 out of 5 Black Rangers, I thought it was an okay way to start. I don't know if this was a, a great opening match, or an opening bout, maybe sh this should have more been mid-show. But we'll get to the mid show later. Trust me. After that, uh, Mark Henry does the uh, leg thing where he uses the chair and the leg on the Great Kali, and you know Kali 
supposedly is injured. We come back from break, and Kali's getting stretchered out, and Jinder Mahal is, you know, while they're stretching Kali out, Jinder Mahal's screaming at the great Kali, in Pujambi. There he goes, Mario. Uh, in Pujambi. So, Pujambi. Anyway, um, so that was basically that. I don't like the fact they're splitting up Kali and Mahal just because I, I was hoping they would be a tag team. WWE needs tag teams. All right, second match of the night, which is Evan Bourne and Jack Thwacker, who is technically a Raw... Both are Raw superstars, technically, so... Um, and I gave this 2 out of 5 Yellow Rangers. It wasn't a terrible match at all. It just got very little time. Uh, this match needed a lot more time to do to showcase any of these guys' talents. In the end, Vicky Guerrero... Uh, distracted the referee while Dolph Ziggler, you know, hung Evan Bourne's neck up on the rope. Evan Bourne got out of that because Jack Swagger was going to go for a gut wrench power bomb, and Evan Bourne reversed it and hit him with the knee. Evan was going to go for the shooting star press. Vicky pushed Evan Bourne off the top rope. Swagger locks on the ankle lock for the win. It was an okay match, but it just got no time. It was like a three-minute match of that. It was kind of like a Raw match, honestly. Oh, look, two Raw superstars, a Raw match. Third match of the night, which is Sin Cara 1.0 versus Heath Slater. This was another really quick match. Uh, I gave it 1 out of 5 Red Rangers. It was, as I said, just really quick. I mean, this was like the, the honeymoon match. Like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, uh, it, it got started. These guys went back and forth a tiny bit. In the end, though, Sin Cara hit a swanton bomb off the top rope for the three count. And actually, I like Sin Cara doing that swanton bomb. I think Sin Cara is a good person to take over that Swanton Bomb since Jeff Hardy's not in WWE anymore. So, I'm not fly on the, uh, you know, the, the senton from the apron into the moonsault. That's just not, it's, I don't know, it just doesn't work with me. Uh, the, the flip bottom off the top rope is okay, but you can't do that on everybody. The Swanton Bomb is something that he can do to everybody. So, anyway. After the match, Sin Cara 2.0 comes on the screen, and he takes off the blue mask that he has on, and he debuts a black outfit, which I really like. Actually, I was like, I really like the black outfit. I'm like, oh, okay, I can I can do it. I can deal with that. That's a really cool-looking black outfit. So it's a black and yellow outfit, and Sin Cara versus black and, or blue and yellow Sin Cara uh, this upcoming Sunday at Hell in a Cell. As long as they keep the botches down, I think this could actually be a really good match. So, you have Evil Sin Cara and Good Sin Cara, Sin Cara 1.0 versus Sin Cara 1.2.0, whatever you want to say. Backstage, John Laurinaitis is having a, uh, a meeting with several heel superstars. David Otunga chimes in and just says, and he thanks John Laurinaitis for letting him use his, uh, his Harvard degree in law, which is great. I, I think, you know, that's awesome that Otunga graduated from law, Harvard Law. He just needs to become a better wrestler, um, and, I don't know, just do something productive, I mean, granted, he was a tag champ, but, I mean, he, he was in a feud recently with Jerry Lawler, and it's like, oh, gosh, that's where people's careers go to die, um, anyway, so, I, I'm really thinking that, um, that I don't know what they're doing with Otunga, I'm guessing he's probably gonna be on SmackDown now, um, he just, Otunga needs just to work with some, a veteran. Otunga just needs to work with a veteran to get his, you know, to, to work on his abilities. And I think Otunga will be a decent wrestler if they just get him up to speed. Um, they're all kind of talking. These are all heel guys talking. But in the end, Dolph Ziggler says something about all being in for Monday. And maybe I just missed it, what they were talking about, but, because I didn't rewind it. But I, it was kind of an ominous, you know, so we're all in for Monday what are we in for Monday for? I mean, are they suing Triple H? Are they, you know, I mean, is Miz and Truth coming? I mean, I'm pretty sure Miz and Truth are coming back, but is it going to be this Monday? I thought it'd be Hell in a Cell, where they would come back and do something to Triple H. So, we'll see what happens. Fourth match of the night, which is the piss break match of the night, which is Natalia versus Kelly Kelly. I gave this one out of five Pink Rangers. Why? Because A, Kelly Kelly won, and B, this match was just crap. I mean, no, no fault to Natalia. Kelly Kelly, and this match just like was like 30 seconds, uh, more than 30 seconds, it was like a minute and a half long. I mean, the only thing that notable that happened in this match was after the match. Uh, the way that Kelly Kelly won was she got a victory roll on Natalia and got the win. 
the great part was afterward, Beth Phoenix hits a glam slam while Kelly Kelly, then uh, Natalia puts her in that reverse figure four, fl and then inverts it, and then grabs her hands and pulls her. Oh, it just looks like it, it would hurt. Like, wow. I mean, I know that the women are really flexible, and it probably doesn't hurt as bad as it looks for, for, the, for the flexible women uh, divas, but it's like, dude, that sucks. And believe it or not, Kelly Kelly did a great job in this after segment selling the pain that, she, like, selling that this was a move that seriously sucked to be in because she was screaming in agony. And she made me believe it. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. So, uh, and Beth Phoenix was in the ring and she was saying, oh, you know, poor pretty Barbie, blah, blah, blah. And she put the mic to Kelly Kelly and Kelly Kelly screaming and crying. And it was great. I just wish, you know, they'd get the belt off Kelly Kelly. But, as you can tell, the middle of the show was really not that great. So now we get into the second half of the show, which finally starts to pick up. We have the fifth match of the night, which is Cody Rhodes versus Sheamus. This is an intercontinental title match, and I give it three out of five White Rangers. Uh, before before Sheamus comes out, Cody Rhodes cuts a promo saying that you know that he is being discriminated against and he is defending the IC title under protest because last week he was vicious attacked by Randy Orton and he's got nine staples in his head, which or as Triple H called it, a zipper on his head. So. Um, Sheamus comes out and he says something about, you know, beating Cody for the Intercontinental title. I don't know. I don't, like, I like face Sheamus. I just don't like the gimmick they're kind of giving him with the Irish things. I don't know. It's just whatever. Um, this was a good back and forth match. It was really good. Uh, it really made me believe that, that Sheamus and Cody Rhodes could actually have a knockdown drag out feud. And actually, I wouldn't mind seeing a feud between these two. But in the end... Uh, Sheamus goes for a Celtic cross. Christian comes out to, and then causes she uh, Cody Rhodes to get DQ'd. So I gave it three out of five. Where Rangers, it would have been four out of five, but the ending, I was like, I'm not a fan of DQs. I mean, you know, maybe if Cody would have low blowed him, and you know, Cody got himself DQ'd, that would be one thing. But when you have outside interference, it just, I feel, it takes away. And Christian should have came out after the match was over, and then beat up on Sheamus. All right, six match tonight, which is the woo woo woo, woo you know it. Zack Ryder versus yo 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 yo. It's your boy JTG. I gave this a, I, well, a, Zack Ryder versus JTG. If you can make out that mess I just made, um, a three out of five off of fives. This was a really good match. For, this is like a really good undercard match. JTG really was showing me something this match. He had some nice moves in here. And he worked really well with, with Zack Ryder. So I thought this was a very entertaining, good match. Um, good for both these guys. And, and I finally found something that, you know, D Jose 101 and his arch nemesis, Michael Cole, vintage Michael Cole, have in common. Their enemy is Zack Ryder now. So DH, you are now with your vintage enemy, Michael Cole. Anyway, so in the end, Zack Ryder hits a Rough Rider out of nowhere and pins JTG. So vintage Zack Ryder for the win. Backstage, we have Triple H and John Laurinaitis. I, I'm guessing this was probably filmed on Raw because this is the only appearance that Triple H makes on the whole SmackDown program. But basically, John Laurinaitis just says that he supports Triple H 100%. And then Triple H says, good, good, because I would hate to have to wish you well in your future endeavors. So they're really pushing this whole future endeavors thing. Alright, backstage. We have an interview with Randy Orton. He basically says he's going to hurt Mark Henry at Hell in a Cell. He's been in three Hell in a Cells. Mark Henry's been in none. So Randy Orton's going to beat him up, I guess. Uh, seventh match of the night, which is the match of the night. And... Um, is the main event, which is Christian versus Randy Orton. I give this 4 out of 5 Green Rangers. This was another great Randy Orton-Christian match. I'm kind of glad the world title was not on the line because, you know, with, with their feud before, you know, they were all fighting... Orton and Christian were fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. It just got stale. This time it's just building momentum towards the pay-per-view. And... I just... I, I really enjoyed this match. I mean, this uh, was a great example of a great Randy Orton Christian match again, and this time the title wasn't even on the line, so it's like, I, I really enjoy these two going at it. Uh, some of the hi highlights of this match was uh, Christian hits a nice spine buster on Randy Orton, he just kind of picks him up out of nowhere, just 
slams him down to the side. Uh, Christian hits a nice spear on Orton toward, towards the end of the match. I mean, just I mean, and I thought Orton was going to reverse it or whatnot, but out of just man, just Christian just plows through Orton, uh, and he gets a two count. But in the end, both get counted out um, because Christian starts to run away, and then Randy Orton gets out of the ring and start. They just start fighting on the outside, and they both get counted out after the match. Uh, Cody Rhodes comes down and tries to help Christian out. Then after that, Sheamus tries to come out and chases Christian away. And then after that, Mark Henry comes out and beats the heck and hits a world's strongest slam on Randy Orton. Is that the end? No. Because as Mark Henry's getting the steel chair to to injure the leg of Randy Orton, as or, as Mark Henry's getting in the ring, Randy Orton hits a surprise RKO for the end of the show. Not for the win, for the end of the show. So... All in all, pretty good SmackDown. What did I give it? I gave it three out of five Blue Rangers. Uh, almost a four, but the, there were a couple matches. The, the Divas match and the Sin Cara Slater match and even the Evan Bourne Swagger match just really hurt the ratings. So it was a pretty good episode of SmackDown. Definitely could use a lot of improvement. The last half of the show is the only thing that I would encourage anyone to go and watch and maybe the opener. So anyway... I'm Bobby Black, and I guess I will see you guys next week. Please comment, like, subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed.